You are now listening to The Weekend Report with Seneca Harris. Check us out on Spotify, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and many more streaming platforms. You can find us on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash UCOFW. We're on Facebook. Check us out under the Urban Wire Media Network. Sit back, relax, as I discuss the latest in entertainment, celebrity gossip, social commentary, and so much more from this week's trending topics. Seas Treats LLC is a decadent sweet shop that creates exquisite desserts for any occasion. Whether it be for an anniversary, birthday, special event, etc., Seas Treats has you covered. Seas Treats LLC uses the most freshest items and the best chocolates, caramels, and products in the world. Every bite of Seas Treats will leave you wanting more. She's located on the west side of Indianapolis and you can connect with her on social media. She's on Facebook and she's on Instagram. Reach out to her via email at seastreats38 at gmail.com or you can contact her at 317-664-2609. Hey everybody, this is the Weekend Report. Welcome to the initial taping. I'm starring Seneca Harris. I'm your commentator. Today I'm just going to give you a couple of headlines that were trending throughout the week um we're going to deal with some news topics politics we're going to talk about a little bit of finance and we're going to talk about local news as well some of the things that we're going to discuss in this show are wendy williams you know she had her final uh, farewell episode on yesterday june 17th so we're going to discuss that we're going to discuss um a little bit of politics dealing with the January 6th insurrection. We're going to talk about the the hearings that are taking place currently. We're going to also give you a little bit of information on finance. We're going to talk about those um, people that are into Bitcoin. Just a a couple things that you guys need to know about the market. And also we're going to talk about a couple other celebrities. So just tune in, um, sit back, relax, and we will get into our topics for this episode. Now, before we even get started, I just wanted to first recognize Juneteenth. I just want to wish everybody a very fun and um, safe Juneteenth holiday. Um, Juneteenth is something that we as the black community have been celebrating for years. It just recently became a federal holiday, but we definitely don't want to forget about Juneteenth and what it means to our community and um, just the sacrifices that our ancestors have made so that we as black Americans can be successful and be who we are today as a group of people. And Juneteenth is also very special to me um, as well because today is my father's birthday. Um, As you guys know, today is Father's Day as well, but it is my father's birthday. He passed about six years ago, and I think this is just a wonderful day to celebrate um, his memory And just all the things that he's done for me and has poured into me. So I really am just very, just very full today. Uh, Very just happy today um, just to be celebrating his memory and just celebrating this wonderful holiday. For those of you that don't know much about Juneteenth, um, it was a holiday that, um, well, unofficial holiday until now, until recently, that a lot of black Americans celebrated. Um, It pretty much marked the day where federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas to take control of the state and ensure that all the enslaved people um, were freed because a lot of um, the slaves didn't even get word that um, they were technically freed. So it took them up to two and a half years to even get the word that they were free. So I just really am glad that we still celebrate that um, that day. And I really would um, 
I would really just encourage everyone just to to really celebrate with your friends and family. Do something good. Do something positive. Give back today. Um, if it if anything, just just give an encouraging words and just just be positive. You know what I mean? It's just about positivity today and positive vibes. So with that being said, let's get into our first story. Testing, 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 testing. All right. Now, as many of you guys know, Wendy Williams show just aired the last episode, June 17th. But Wendy Williams herself wasn't there. As you guys know, she's been dealing with a lot of health issues and a lot of um, personal issues in her life. So um, there's been a, a cast of different celebrities hosting the show, but primarily Sherry Shepard. And just a little bit of background on the show. Um, the, the show ran for 13 successful years in syndication. Um, as I mentioned, she, she has been suffering a lot of health complications, which kind of made her unavailable to host her last season of the show. And there's been a lot of controversy, you know, kind of like a lot of bitterness on Wendy Williams. And like, I, you know, I know she kind of threw shot, shots at Sherry Shepard. Um, I think it was about a couple months ago, a month or two ago, I guess there was a little, you know, small banter back and forth between her and Sherry Shepard online. And I can kind of understand why she would be kind of um, bitter because a lot of the people that 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 worked on the show with her kind of turned their backs on her. They were putting her business out there in the street and stuff like that. But, you know, it's just really sad that this 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 woman that built this empire she wasn't even there to celebrate the last season of her show. So I can kind of see why she was a little bit of ups, you know, upset about the situation. But um, I, I felt that the show kind of ended it ended on a good note. You know, um, I do believe that Sherry Shepard will do good with her. Um, show that's coming on this fall, she's going to be taking that spot of Wendy Williams, that primetime spot. Um, just watching her, I think she's very um, engaging. She's very, uh, she has a very good stage presence. So, you know, I, I think she will be very successful in her show. Um, just a little bit of information about Sherry Shepard's show. It will be produced by um, John Murray and David Perler, um, who pretty much, they were um, behind the success of the Wendy Williams show. So we're going to be very um, interesting interested in seeing where this show goes um just seeing if it is successful which i believe it is going to be successful and we'll just be tuned in so let's jump into our next topic all right now the next story that we're going to go on and discuss has to deal with justin bieber uh, many of you know that he's a very successful songwriter and singer and he recently just took to instagram to you know, just update his followers on um, something that he's been dealing with. It's an illness that he's been dealing with by the name of Ramsey Hunt Syndrome. And those of you that don't know what that is, it's a rare neurogi neurological disorder that is caused by the same virus that causes chicken pox and shingles. Um, it's kind of caused him to have like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's, I guess it's almost like he's had, a, it looks like he's had a stroke on, one side of his face but um he went to instagram to kind of just let everybody know that he's 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 getting through it he's doing well um we're gonna go to this clip um of him speaking on instagram and i will come back with the rest of my commentary hey everyone um justin here uh I wanted to update you guys on what's been going on. Um, obviously, as you can probably see from my face, um, I have uh, this syndrome called uh, um, Ramsey Hunt syndrome. And it is from this virus that um, attacks the nerve in my ear and my facial nerves 
and has caused my face to have paralysis. As you can see, this eye is not blinking. I can't smile on this side of my face. This nostril will not move. So there's full paralysis in this side of my face. So for those who are frustrated by my cancellations of the next shows, um, I'm just physically, obviously not <laughs> capable of doing them. Uh, this is pretty serious, as you can see. Um, I wish this wasn't the case, but obviously my body's telling me I gotta slow down. And um, I hope you guys understand. And uh, I'll be using this time to just rest and relax and get back to 100% so that I can um, do what uh, I was born to do. But in the meantime, this ain't it. I gotta, I gotta go get my my rest on so that I can get my face back to where it's supposed to be. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for being patient with me. And uh, I'm gonna get better. And I'm doing all these facial exercises to get my face back to normal. And um, it will go back to normal. It's just time. And we don't know how much time that's gonna be, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be okay. And I have hope and um, I trust God. And um, I trust that this is all gonna, it's all for a reason. And um, I'm not sure what that is right now, but in the meantime, I'm gonna rest and I, I love you guys. Peace. Hey. Um, but Dr. Ashton, <laughs> hey, uh, you were talking about this this morning on Good Morning America. Yeah. Uh, news we got about Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber uh, made an announcement at the end of the day on Friday about the fact that he's been diagnosed with something called Ramsey Hunt Syndrome, which is, you can think of it similar to Bell's palsy, similar to shingles, in that it's a reactivation of the varicella virus. So anyone who's had chicken pox uh, can get this. It's pretty rare, according to my colleagues in neurology. It affects about five out of every 100,000 people. Um, and similar to Bell's palsy, most of the time it's temporary, but it causes an inflammation and in some cases a paralysis of the facial nerve, which when you're a performer, or someone who sings, uh, I mean, it can, be a, it can be a problem for anyone, but particularly for him. So he can, is struggling with moving that side of the face, with swallowing, um, sometimes some hoarseness, some ability to make tears. Um, most of the time it resolves on its own with some antiviral medication and steroids. But I mean, just to bring awareness to this, even though it's rare, I think is, is going to help a lot of people. Yeah, it was striking to hear this isn't just about aesthetics. I mean, there are actual real complications yeah. with living your life. You can't even blink on one side. Right. Is there any indication how long this typically lasts? There isn't. I mean, part of it has to do with how severe the onset is. So the more inflammation of that facial nerve, uh, the longer it can take to resolve. Inflammation just means literally that nerve swells and then its functions are impaired. And when you talk about being able to close your eye, to make tears, to blink, and to chew and swallow, you know, that's a big deal. So we wish him the best and thank him for bringing this to everyone's attention. All right, we're back. Um, that last clip that I threw in there um, came from ABC News and the lady that was giving the information pertaining to that particular syndrome um, was a medical correspondent by the name of Dr. Jen Ashton. So just wanted to throw that in there so you guys can be more educated about um, this particular syndrome. But like I said, our prayers and thoughts are going out to Justin Bieber. I know that he's really um, did a major turnaround in his life. He's more, um, he's really into the, you know, the Christian faith now. And it's really good to see that, um, how, to see that he's now being a good role model to his fans and being a good role model to people in general. So I really... Um, I'm sending out prayers and positive energy, and I pray that he has a speedy recovery. So with that being said, let's move on to our next topic. We want to send congratulations out to singer Jennifer Hudson, who just recently joined the EGOT Club. A member of the EGOT Club is an artist who has won an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. 
let's go to this clip to um, gain better insight of this. This clip comes from CBS Chicago, and I will be back with the rest of my commentary. And the Tony goes to a strange loop. And with that, Chicago's own Jennifer Hudson joined the EGOT group. The singer and actress took home her first Tony Award last night. It was the final trophy that she needed to complete the EGOT quartet. That means she has an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony EGOT. Wow. Hudson produced the new musical, A Strange Loop. That won Best Musical at the Tonys last night. The Chicago native joined 16 other EGOTs, which include Whoopi Goldberg, Mel Brooks, Audrey Hepburn, and John Legend. So a big congrats. Hey, I also want to mention some of her other accomplishments as well. Jennifer Hudson won a 2007 Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her role in Dreamgirls, <clears throat> two Grammy Awards in 2009 for the Best R&B Album and Best Musical Album, which was from the musical The Color Purple, and she also earned a Daytime Emmy Award. So once again, we do want to send congrats to Jennifer Hudson. She is definitely a testimony and a testament to what you can do. She know, as many of you guys know that really have followed her life story, she's gone through a lot of trials and tribulations. She's lost a lot of people. Um, she's lost a lot of things in her life, but she has persevered. And we wanted to just, you know, just do this segment and give her recognition for all the accomplishments that she has made in her life. So let's move on to our next story. Um, we want to send congrats to Grammy-nominated rapper Post Malone on his first child at the age of 26. This is what he had to say in an interview that was conducted by E! News. He said, quote, I'm excited for this next chapter in my life. I'm the happiest I've ever been. And then he continues by saying that it's time to take care of my body and my family and friends and spread as much love as we can every day. So, uh, once again, congratulations. It's, that's a wonderful thing to hear. Moving on, we're going to talk about Bad Boys Club LA. Milan Christopher, um, which he is one of the cast members of LA, uh, Bad Boys Club LA, he announced that he is doing his own spin to the show. And it's going to be Bad Boys Club Atlanta. And he's holding auditions for this show. But the problem is, is that he's doing this show without Zeus TV. And this is their franchise. So currently there is going to be some legal ramifications for that. There's going to be a legal battle. So I, I heard that um, it's getting real messy. So we'll, we'll keep our ears to the streets on that. Uh, for those of you... Um, that don't really know much about him. He is best known for his supporting role in VH1's Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. So, we will continue to follow this story. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is a little finance. Um, those of you that are investors in Bitcoin, um, this is just something that you might want to know. Um, investors are worried that another crypt crypto collapse will bring down other key players according to CNBC. Um, crypto lending, lending firm Celsius on Monday paused all accounts um, and withdrawals sparking fears that it may be um, a red, about ready to bust. So the negative implications for this could um, also leak into other uh, parts of the crypto market. So those of you that are into cryptocurrency um, I just want to throw this out there, and I thought it was fascinating to bring forth today. So let's move on with our next topic. In other entertainment news, Miss Robbie from the hit reality show Welcome to Sweetie Pies is currently going through a lot. Her son James Timothy Norman is currently awaiting trial for his part in the Hire to Kill plot against her grandson, which at the time was 21 years old, um, by the name of Andrew Montgomery. Um, those of you that have been following this story, um, you pretty much know that um, Timothy Norman took out some insurance policy to uh, in, in, in hopes of cashing in on it. Um, he set, set up um, his, his, his nephew, Andrew Montgomery, to be killed. And there were three other people that were involved in it. Um, the guy that he went to to set up the insurance policy. And then there was a girl that 
he used to pretty much lure him to the spot to where um, the other gentleman was, you know, um, scheduled to be there to kind of um, set him up and kill him. So right now it's just a big, big mess. And um, this has been going on since 2016. Um, well, he was actually convicted in 2020, but this stems all the way back like almost six years ago. So, um, Miss Robbie recently did an interview with KTVI News, and uh, we're going to go to a clip because she is still standing by her son, even though there were, um, word on the street is that there was possibly a murder um, plot against his own mother, Miss Robbie. So, it's this is just so crazy, but we're going to go to this clip um, where she is doing this interview um, with K KTVI TV, and she's pretty much saying that she's on a stand by her son. So we're gonna go to this clip, and I will come back with the rest of my commentary. Anything else to do? Yeah. yeah. And, and you've had some tough times. Too. I've had tough times, and I'm still having them. But God is good, and you know they say He won't put no more on you than you can bear. I'm having, I'm going through it. My son is in trouble right now, but I'm his mother. And I don't know no more about it than you because I hear about it when you do. But I'm there for him to support. That's what mothers do. We're doing to death to us part. Same as a marriage. So if something happens to your kid, you got to be there for him because you're their inspiration. And not that uh, what he's involved in was good or bad. I don't know. But that's my son. And I can't abandon him now. So I'm there for him. And, I, and tomorrow... You know what they say, you pay the light bill, the gas bill is due. So that's the way life is. And I appreciate All right, we are back. This is just so sad and so unfortunate that Tim Norman felt that a $400,000 policy was worth putting his mother and his family through all of this, this grief and tor turmoil. So it's we will continue to follow this case. Um, the shooter was, I also forgot to um to include this the shooter was Travell Anthony Hill and he was 30 he's 30 years old he recently pled guilty and implicated James Timothy Norman as his employer and he also implicated the two other um, people that I mentioned earlier um, in connection to the crime so the the trial is expected to begin in September of 2022 and we will continue to follow this story on our network it's just very unfortunate that Miss Robbie, who who definitely has a a wonderful, just a sweet spirit, just a caring spirit, that she has to go through this, and it's just crazy. It goes goes to show you, no matter how much love that you give to kids or how well you try to rear them, it doesn't always mean that they're going to turn out to be productive citizens of society. And this isn't. Um, Timothy Norman's first stint with the law. He he he's served time in the past, so he's no um, he's he's no newcomer as when it comes to the the legal system. So it's very sad that again, like I said, it's sad that that she's going through this. But our prayers and our thoughts will be with her, and I pray that um, she's able to move on and pick up the pieces of her life. So let's move on to our um, world of politics, and we're going to discuss the January 6th insurrection. Let's start off with some highlights from the hearing. So we're going to go to some of these highlights, and then I'll come back with my commentary. When Mike Pence made it clear that he wouldn't give in to Donald Trump's scheme, Donald Trump turned the mob on him a mob that was chanting, hang Mike Pence, a mob that had built a hangman's gallows just outside the Capitol. Here, Dr. Eastman says the vice president can reject the Biden electors from the states that he calls, quote, disputed. Under several of the scenarios, the vice president could ultimately just declare Donald Trump the winner, regardless of the vote totals that had already been certified by the states. Do you know if they ever expressed an opinion on whether they thought the vice president had the power that John Eastman said he did? 
I know for a fact I heard both say that his theory was crazy, that there was no validity to it in any way, shape, or form. It is unambiguous that the vice president does not have the authority to reject electors. There is no suggestion of any kind that it does. So let's see what Dr. Eastman did as a result when he was deposed by this committee. I assert my Fifth Amendment right against being compelled to be a witness against myself. Did the Trump legal team ask you to prepare a memorandum regarding the vice president's role in the counting of electoral votes at the joint session of Congress on January 6, 2020? Dr. Eastman pled the Fifth a hundred times. In fact, just a few days later, Dr. Eastman emailed Rudy Giuliani and requested that he be included on a list of potential recipients of a presidential pardon. So then you said at some point there's a telephone conversation between the president and the vice president, is that correct? Yes. When I entered the office the second time, he was on the telephone with who I later found out to be was the vice president. Could you hear the vice president or only hear the president's end? Only hear the president's end. And at some point it started off as a calmer tone and everything and then became heated. The conversation was pretty heated. I am aware of the fact that the president was upset with the way Pence acted. And the word that she relayed to that the president called the vice president, I apologize for being impolite, but do you remember what she said her father called him? The P word. The vice president did not want to take any chance that the world would see the vice president of the United States fleeing the United States Capitol. He was determined that we would complete the work that we had set out to do that day, that it was his constitutional duty to see through, and that the rioters who had breached the Capitol would not have the satisfaction of disrupting the proceedings beyond the day on which they were supposed to be completed. As we know, the House Committee's January 6 hearings continue to take place. And through these hearings, they are attempting to establish the former President Donald Trump's involvement um, of the insurrection and the riot that took place on January 6, 2021 at the U.S. Capitol building. Some of the key points that they're trying to explore and trying to prove, some of the points they're trying to prove during the hearings are the following. The former president's willingness to ignore the, the will of the voters and the American people and spread false claims of fraud. And also they're going to try to prove the fact that he ignored, um, well, he ignited some of the rallies that took place. Um, also, he also ignored the rulings of the courts when the rulings didn't go in his favor. So pretty much as long as the legal system didn't work on his, as long as the legal system worked on his behalf, he was all, you know, all gang for everything. But as soon as they established that you don't have any, um, you don't have a legal footing on some of these claims that you were um, alleging that, that there was voter fraud and, and there was fraud during the election. You know, he didn't want to abide by that. He, you know, he had this conspiracy theory that everybody's against him and stuff like that. So they're going to look into those claims and then they're going to look into his involvement in influencing extremist groups like the Proud Boys, which a lot of them are currently some of the leadership in proud the top leadership in the proud boys are currently being indicted on charges stemming from the january 6th insurrection and also they're going to present information um via forms of records and depositions and um uh, making and improving their claims and the question that i have for you guys is do you think that trump will be actually brought up on charges with everything that's being presented so far, you would think that there's enough evidence um, that he he should be brought up on charges, but that will remain to be seen. Like I mentioned, um, the Proud Boys leadership has already been brought up on charges stemming from the insurrection. Um, Enrique Tarrio is one of them that has been brought up 
on charges and we're going to go to a clip really quick um kind of outlining his involvement in it and after that we're going to go to our next topic but i just want to throw this clip in there um outlining the fact that there were um white supremacist groups and extremist groups that were influenced by donald trump and these some of these leaders in these organizations are currently um being brought up on some serious charges so after we go to this clip we'll jump into Four members of the Proud Boys, including former leader Enrique Tarrios, have been indicted by the federal grand jury with seditious conspiracy charges relating to the events on January 6th. Now, that indictment alleged that Tarrio was aware of discussions about a plan to storm the Capitol and was even involved in conversations about occupying federal buildings. Our national security correspondent, Ken Delanian, joins us now. Uh, Ken, what do we know in terms of the specifics about this particular indictment? Hey, Morgan. Well, we know, obviously, uh, former Proud Boys leader Tario is already in jail on existing charges related to January 6th. But this is a new indictment that goes further, charging him and others with seditious conspiracy. That's essentially a criminal plot involving the use of force to overthrow the U.S. government. The indictment also names other Proud Boys members, including Ethan Nordine, Joseph Biggs, Zachary Rell, and Dominic Pozzola. Prosecutors have not accused Terrio of taking part of this, in the storming of the Capitol, but the indictment alleges that he was part of the planning. It says that he communicated with an unnamed person about a plan to occupy crucial buildings in Washington, including House and Senate office buildings, with as many people as possible to, quote, show our politicians that we the people are in charge. And the indictment says Terrio told the person he was not playing games. The new indictment really offers few new facts, but it, it does up the ante in terms of the seriousness of the charges. The sedition charge carries a maximum penalty, Morgan, of 20 years in prison. And Ken, I mean, this indictment also sort of gives us new details about what Tarrio himself was actually doing on that day, on January 6th. Where was he? Yeah, well, first of all, it, it, the superseding indictment notes that Tario and Stuart Rhodes, the former head of the Oath Keepers, met in an underground garage on January 5th. Now, Rhodes and other members of the right-wing Oath Keepers organization were previously indicted on seditious conspiracy charges. So there's a hint here that the government is alleging a broader conspiracy among these groups, although they don't exactly spell that out. But as you mentioned, the indictment also offers new details about what Tario was thinking on January 6th by including new messages that he exchanged with an unnamed person that night. According to the indictment, the unnamed person wrote, quote, brother, you know we made this happen. I'm so proud of my country today. And Terrio replied, I know. And then the unnamed person at, later asked, dude, did we just influence history? This was before Congress had returned to the Capitol to certify the election results. And Terrio replied, let's first see how this plays out, Morgan. Now, before we get to our last story, I want to throw one more thing in here. Um, as many of you have been following Monique's story. You you know that she's been going through a lot of back and forth drama with um, comedian and commentator D.L. Hughley um, over a show that took place at the Fox Theater in Detroit on May 28th. And it has something to do with um, a contractual agreement or something of that nature dealing with who would headline the show. And it's just been a messy, messy back and forth for several weeks now. Um, which a lot of low blows were were pretty much jabbed at <laughs> at each other, you know what I mean? So mostly on Monique's end, and me personally, I just had to say I've always been a fan of Monique, um, and I've always admired how she made a name for herself and how she came up. But I really personally cannot, I, I can't stand for or take up for the fact that she brought D.L. Hughley's daughter into it. Something that didn't have anything to do with it. She brought his family into it um, and brought up the fact that she was sexually violated. And I just think that that was a low blow. And it's, it's to the point now where her family members, like her brother and her sister, came out on social media kind of condemning her and telling her, hey, you need to be humble. And you need to kind of, um, you know, I mean, just just fall back a little bit. You know what I mean? Because you're doing a little bit too much. So I just kind of feel that Monique is really showing her true identity, showing her true self. And I'm all for her speaking out 
against injustices that were done to her. But I don't agree with the fact that she is taking this route. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times you may be the victim of something, but the way you react will kind of make you look like you're the perpetrator and make you look worse than the actual uh, victimizer. I mean, the actual actual victimizer. So I just kind of feel that she she definitely needs some. She needs to go uh, deal with her her issues. Like she needs to go seek some professional help because I think there is some past trauma that she has not dealt with and i feel that this is really impacting her her um, career and i feel that if she wasn't black if she was blackballed before she's definitely going to be blackballed again if she doesn't slow her role you know what i mean so i guess recently netflix and monique came to some mutual agreement they settled we don't really know what the settlement included but I kind of feel that maybe the settlement just, they just want to settle because she is doing that project with Lee Daniels, which is going to be streamed through Netflix. And I kind of feel that, you know, maybe they just want to settle it so they can move forth with the project. So I, I just feel like, you know, if you're going to be vocal about this whole Netflix and all this, you know, oppression that you've been going through, I think you should be a little bit more. Uh, forthcoming and give more details on this settlement since you involved the public in it you know what I mean so I just want to know from you guys um, do you guys feel that this situation is far from being over or do you think that we're going to hear more about it because I think things are starting to fizzle out a little bit but who knows like this for the past like almost heading on to like almost a month Every time we think that it's dying down, then just more and more keeps coming to to the surface. So I just I'm just curious to see what happens. And I don't know. We just wish Monique the best. I really um, hope that she gets the help that she needs because she definitely needs to go talk to someone. I feel because it's really um, starting to show everybody's seeing it. Everybody's discussing it. And a lot of her supporters are really starting to be turned off. And are starting to see who she really is. So we'll continue to follow this story and provide you with updates. All right, we're going to go to our last story. I want to give some COVID-19 updates as of June 14, 2022. Um, in Indianapolis, vaccinations are now available for children five and up. Um, Indiana State Department will provide these vaccines on 614 floyd county is listed as a high community risk of spreading covid uh, 14 other counties in indiana boone brown clark crawford grant green harrison knox laporte miami Monroe, owen wabash and washington counties are listed as medium risk um, surrounding Indiana counties such as Louisville are listed as medium and Chicago um, is listed as a high risk, which most metropolitan areas um, of that size typically are listed as high risk by CDC. Um, according to the John Hoskins University, there have been 1.01 million deaths nationwide and 85.62 million confirmed cases. Globally, 535.87 million cases have been reported with 6.31 million deaths. 11.5 billion vaccines have been administered worldwide. And uh, Biden administration continuing with um, COVID with the COVID um, mandates, Biden has lifted the COVID-19 test requirement for international travel. And a lot of airlines and tourism groups are very happy for this news because it kind of um, discouraged a lot of international travel. So um, with things opening back up, um, I know the cost of flights are now gradually going up. And I think there's other factors with that, too, with the fuel prices and stuff. But um, a lot of them are happy that um, that these mandates are being lifted. And in other news, um, Mick Jagger from... 
the Rolling Stones tested positive for coronavirus as well. So they had to cancel um, a concert that they had on Monday. So um, just depending on how things go, some of the tour dates might be canceled in, in the future as well. So I believe that's all that we had to talk about today. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for tuning in to our initial taping of this show. Um, we will have more trending topics if you guys want to advertise with us or if you want to send us show ideas or any ideas or if you want to become a contributor on our network, you can email me at seharris02 at gmail.com or you can email us also at ucofw.indy at g- gmail.com. And also check us out um, our other shows. We have we're coming back with a lot of our shows. Um, the T podcast is back. Um, the Urban Wire, our news news show is coming back next month, and the Weekend Report. You can check us out on Apple. We're on, we're on several platforms now. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Google Podcasts, um, Stitcher, Spotify, um, Audible, um, TuneIn, Stitcher. So. Hopefully, we will get approved to be on uh, Pandora soon. So, that will be another outlet where you guys can go and listen to our um, podcast. And if you would like to advertise with us, um, like I said, you can hit us up at the email that I provided. And that's about it. So, until next time, have a good weekend. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Father's Day. Um, If you know just appreciate your family your fathers if you have your father around um or if you have your family or your your mother around in general just just appreciate them because tomorrow's not a promise to anybody you know what i mean so if you have any beefs or any issues family issues just go ahead and just nip that stuff in the bud because you don't want to wake up one day and your loved one's gone and you you know you're going through all these shoulda coulda wouldas and I, I just I don't wish that on anybody, you know. Uh, so, until in, till next time, have a good weekend, and I will catch you soon on the weekend report with Seneca Harris. You are now listening to the weekend report with Seneca Harris. Check us out on Spotify, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and many more streaming platforms. You can find us on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash UCOFW. We're on Facebook. Check us out under the Urban Wire Media Network. Sit back, relax, as I discuss the latest in entertainment, celebrity gossip, social commentary, and so much more. From this week's trending topics. <laughs>